be alone You never were a good liar So why the hell would you try to pull the wall? Hey loves, welcome, welcome back to the channel In today's video we are filming what you need to know before moving to Rwanda And if it's what you're interested in hearing, keep on watching Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe most importantly like my videos because your like help me grow they actually push out my content so yes we go for that too we're just gonna dive right into this video yeah let's go so guys i have actually grouped this video into categories so it makes it easy for us to understand okay so yes the first group will be apps you need then we're going to dive into things you really need to know before moving to Rwanda before going into the categories of things I wrote down let's talk about the basic you need to know about Rwanda the language in Rwanda is in this order Kenya Rwanda French and English trust me when I was coming this was my order English French Kenya Rwanda I just myself okay so yes yeah, this is what you should know that the language in Rwanda is Kenya Rwanda French and English so majority of people will speak Kenya Rwanda few will speak French and a lower class of people will speak English that's what you should know the religion I feel like most um, Rwandese are Catholic from my own studies and what I've seen people have interacted with that you have other Christian religion, Christianity and then Islam international dining code is plus 250 I feel like these are the basic things you need to know about Rwanda so yes let's just dive right into apps you need to know so in the apps you need to know I kind of group them into um, other categories so the first category of app I'm going to be talking about is money and finances so I feel like Rwanda is driving towards a cashless economy in my own opinion and to be very honest I never even know there was something called MTN Momo so MTN Momo is like they have the dialing code as well as the app I would leave on the screen you guys will see everything I'm talking about so in Rwanda here when you go out someone will tell you oh do you want to pay with Momo you have cash Oh, can I give you change in Momo? So I feel like Momo is like a huge thing here. So you can either have the app or directly use the code to dial it. So, but when coming to Rwanda, ensure that you download the MTN Momo app. The good thing with MTN Momo is that you can actually pay your bills from MTN Momo. For me, I pay for my monthly Wi Fi with MTN Momo. I as well pay my light bill with MTN Momo. A lot of things you can do with your MTN Momo to be very honest. You can transfer money to someone else, you can receive money, you can pay your bills, you can buy data you can recharge your phone with mtm literally there are a lot you can actually do with mtm so ensure you download that app before coming here or while you're in quarantine just get that app okay so there are other apps money or finance apps such as heptapay pay.rwanda spen nokanda um i've not really used this app okay I don't really know so much the one i use like 99 percent of the time is actually mtn momo but i've used nokanda once i wanted to recharge for like i want to send transfer money to someone and they're like oh use nokanda it's easy and i did it worked right for other ones i've not really used but i've been in a forum where the founder i guess for spend was talking about the app and everything so um it's a great app i won't lie so but i really don't know so much about other apps but mtn momo so this is the these are the apps you need to download for your money and finances when coming to rwanda so the next category of apps we're going to be talking about is taxi the, ta the app you literally use to order taxis right i only know of two i hope i'm right i don't know if there are more than that but i know of two one is called yego caps and the other one is called move so i've used the both before i found that, that move was way cheaper i think move is by volkswagen and i knew it was way way cheaper like three dollars less okay so because where I, I went the same place different times using these two different apps and move was cheaper okay oh i will say that yego is more convenient than move even though move is cheaper because i don't know what i'm about to say i don't know if move has that service but with yego i, I, I knew that when i came to rwanda newly i found out that when anytime i just randomly stop a bike man because i don't know the language i speak english so they overcharge me you know and i can't even argue so i just hop on the bike so but then i someone told me that oh you can use yego to order a motorbike literally so i called i i think you call and then they link you with the customer a customer service picks and they link you up with a bike man so and then they run in meters right so you when you stop you see how much it's on the meter and you pay so it was more easy for me that way so that's the only way i feel like yego is is um is better in my own opinion but move is cheaper so i think these are the two major apps you need 
when it comes to ordering tax. I kind of added the Google Map to taxes because I feel like you literally need Google Maps. So I had the map that came with my, my phone, but the problem is that when I was trying to like, for example, I was when I just came here, I was trying to locate Miniso at KBC and it was difficult using the map that came with my phone. But then someone I called someone like, oh, use Google Map, it's easy. And it was, I could find, I was like, I wanted to work that day. So I found, like, it was so easy with Google Maps. So I noticed that anytime I decided to use the app that came with my phone, so I use an Apple product, so it doesn't just work. But if I use a Google Map, it makes so much sense. So I feel like you need a Google Map. I feel like you should download a Google Map while coming here. If you have that, good and fine. But if you don't, because I was never using Google Map before. But yeah, I, I found it very helpful when I came to Rowan. The app I'll be talking about is Travel App. The only one I just found relevant for me is Airbnb. Literally after your quarantine in the um, hotel, the designated hotels, then you have to like, okay, if you're coming here for a long stay, you want to look for a house to stay um, for the long run, but then you need like somewhere to lay your head if you don't want to stay in the hotel that they give you for your quarantine. So um, I found Airbnb. I don't need to explain so much about Airbnb. We all know Airbnb, but it's very useful. You will download, like you literally see houses, pick and then you move in literally, and then you can now take your time to look for the part the house you really want to stay for the for the while you're here. That's what I did, and I found it very useful. Category of apps are grocery shopping and food. I personally like going to the market to pick out what I want. I like to see it, pick it, like hand pick my stuff. But um the period I came was a period where they were having multiple um, curfew. There was a time there was a total lockdown for like 14 days. So this is where this app come in very handy. Especially also if you decide you don't like going to the market or going shopping, these apps are very important. So the first app I'll talk about is Voba Voba. Voba Voba has everything. You can pay um, you can pay bills from Voba Voba, I guess. I've seen that. You can order food they deliver it to you. Like most like I think 90% of the restaurants and the supermarkets here are on Vuba Vuba. So you could just some pay your delivery as low as one dollar. So you just get everything to your doorstep literally. So yeah, you can download Vuba Vuba. There's also another one called Posa Delivery. I've seen people use it. Actually, my top two apps when it comes to grocery shopping or food, ordering food in Rwanda. So I think justice to all the apps you need. But if you are in Rwanda and you're watching this video, please do leave comment just to let her like if there's any app you're using that i didn't talk about please leave it in the comment section below so that people who stumble on this video and are coming to run they can actually see it and you know help themselves out okay let's just help one another literally that's it so yes now we're moving on to the things you need to know i feel like this is the most interesting part things you need to know while moving to run you need to know while moving to run i feel i've gotten a lot a lot of questions from this this section and I've grouped this section into categories as well. So yeah, let's just let's just talk about it. So um, most people ask me best place to live. Now this is how I, like for my seven months of staying here, this is how I picture it now. If you love vibes, you like vibrant environments, you like a busy environment, I feel like the best place for you to live is Yamirambo. Yamirambo has vibes, it has vibrant people, it has, it's just busy, it's just busy, literally. So. If that is what you're into, I feel like Yamirambo is the best for you. But now, let's say, for example, you're coming here to work and you've got to your contract, whatnot, you're just coming in somewhere to stay. I feel like Kimi Horora, I feel like, um, how do you, I, I always miss the pronunciation because Kachiru, Kimi Horora are the vibes for that kind of, you know, you just coming here to work and whatnot. It's a very quiet environment as well. Mind you, these locations are in Kigali, okay? and um yeah just based on my own experience and people have talked with people have seen people have you know gone on meetings with this is literally just put together okay now if the pocket is loaded you have money you're just coming here to yes work chill do whatever but you just need that high class environment you need to stay trust me you need to actually stay in yaritarama vision city kiyovu i think those are my top three for me Literally, yeah. So those are high tech areas, beautiful. Literally, so yeah. Um, I feel like, literally, I just had to group the categories like that. There are other places like Gizozi, name them. It all depends on you. The next um category we'll be talking about is cost of renting. Hmm. I have gotten a lot of questions with the cost of renting, but to be very honest, um, location matters. 
you don't expect to get the same price you get at downtown Kigali or Yarotarama. The same price you're gonna get at um, Yar Yamirambo, for example. So I feel like um, I'm just going to give you a range, okay? So I've met with people, I've talked with people, both foreigners and Rwandese who stay in their own houses, rented apartments. So the lowest rent I've seen with people I've talked with is $200 per month. And the highest I've seen was about $1,500 per month so these are people i've talked with and these are the like the range i've seen but i know i've seen i've, I've seen some apartment that you pay like two thousand dollars per month and yeah but if you're looking for a very comfortable place to stay i will say two hundred to one thousand dollars is fair in kigali because trust me renting is expensive in, in kigali i don't even want to say rwanda but in kigali it's so expensive as you just have to take your time and look but yeah literally this is like feel like this is the cost of renting giving you guys a range literally so yeah so when it comes to transportation in kigali um you have the motorbike you have the public buses you have taxis taxis i feel like yes i have bicycles i have seen bicycles but i've never used it guys i've never used it but yeah um so the cost it depends i'm going to use myself for example so for example i'm going from my house to the hospital where i'm currently working it's like using the bus is 178 rwandan franc but if i'm using the bike it is 300 rwandan franc and if i'm using the taxi i just did that once it's like 6000 rwandan franc so you get so if you're on a budget i feel like the buses are are really good it's cheap it's a public bus it's cheap there's even wi-fi on the bus but the thing is that it is slow it takes its time so it's a lot right but if you're in a hurry i feel like the bike is a transportation in rwanda but if you ask me for the most popular ones it's actually the um bike the advice i would give you is anytime you're going out ensure you're carrying a scarf because no bike man will carry you without you having a scarf to wear your helmets it's just they're just doing it for i think hygiene and covid um regulation literally i think that's the reason why they do that when it comes to internet i won't lie internet is cheap in rwanda because if i'm comparing it to where i'm from which is nigeria and i'm trying to buy unlimited for a month i know i'm gonna spend like 150 dollars for unlimited i've done that before it's a lot but here um services you have here that provide you unlimited you have mtn you have canal box and you have liquid telecommunication so for me i'm using mtn because i first of all called canal box to connect the fiber whatever to my house but <laughs> it was so funny because the cable stopped in the house before mine so i couldn't get canal box so i called mtn and um, i was able to get so for mtn i'm just paying like 24 dollars a month for um, unlimited like you just use your internet anyhow literally and that's how much you pay so comparing it to back from where i'm coming from i will say kigali has unlimited like data is really cheap here really cheap to be running so i feel like yeah these are things you need to know about internet but electricity i i can't even talk so much in electricity because i've not even like in nigeria i stay with my parents and i don't think i've paid electricity bill before but when i was in china i was paying 100 um yuan per month I'll leave on the screen how much that is. Right now, I'm paying $20 per month for electricity. When I came to Rwanda, the first two months, I think I and my friend, we spent almost $150 for electricity. It was draining until one of my neighbors told me, I was complaining to the caretaker of the compound. And one of my neighbors heard and told me that, oh no, you should pay your electricity on the first of every month. So this is how it works here. If you pay your electricity any time of the month, you're going to get the same amount you paid for. For example, when I paid, let's say $5, $10, sometimes $20, $5 would last me for like three days. I'm like, what? I couldn't even use the appliances in my house. It was draining. So, but then paying on the first of every month, they if you pay twenty dollars, for example, you get forty dollars. So ensure that you pay your electricity on the first of every month to save you the stress of excessive paying. Okay, and I noticed that that twenty dollars goes like the whole month. I will do whatever I want to do with my electricity, and you know it works. I couldn't even on my ring lights when I came. It was a lot. So when it comes to the weather in um, <laughs> Kigali. I have nothing to say but it's a cold country now i'm saying it's cold because if i directly came from china to rwanda i wouldn't say it as a cold country because i'm used to it but i kind of went home to nigeria I stayed for like three months got used to the hot weather i came here it's cold here okay it's cold the weather is cold it's a very friendly weather it's not harsh but there's something you should know is that you can the sun can be shining 
now and in the next two seconds it's just gonna rain it's if the weather is unpredictable like it can sh um, shine anytime it can rain anytime literally so when i'm going i just get my umbrella i just get packed up because it's <laughs> the weather here is so unpredictable literally yeah then for food i don't want to talk so much about food because if you leave me i'm gonna have a dedicated video to food here but i feel like if you're coming from a country that has a lot please and please ensure that you pack all those things you need spices things you can sure that you're going to bring things that will make you so that things you can't do without like there's some spices or some particular food like for example rice is universal right so you don't need that but there's some food that i know from my country i'm not going to find it here i didn't know literally i didn't know i came empty-handed but then later i, I mean after staying here for like four months i got deliveries from nigeria so to be very honest um food here is limited i think they have like 10 dishes like locally it's i don't know see i i can't even people that follow me on instagram know my pain okay so but yeah just to ensure that whatever you're bringing and things that you can like from your country that you you can't do without if not <laughs> if not <laughs> you'll be shocked literally yeah so when it comes to the laws rules and regulation i feel like if you are a normal human being <laughs> you will observe the laws in your country as well as anywhere you find yourself in organization in a new country or whatnot but there are things you need to know number one do not litter don't litter in Rwanda. Hold whatever your trash till you find it has been destroyed. Don't litter. Paper bags are the only bags that are available when you're buying something. Okay, you won't find nylon, you won't find cellophane, you won't see all of that. Okay, ensure that you're only going to see paper bags. Literally, yes, and never smoke in public. I feel like these are the basic things I need to like tell you guys. So, are the three basic things. So, just know that you're not going to litter, you're not going to smoke in public, and you're just going to use only paper bags to carry whatever you want to carry. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that's the basic rules and regulation you need to know. Literally. The last thing I'm going to talk about is ordering stuff online from international apps. Whenever you order something, just know you're going to pay for tax. You're going to pay for tax, okay? And you have to give them how much you got those goods. That's how they're going to tax you, okay? So just so that everything you buy online or you're receiving something, you bought something from another country, you're going to pay for tax. It's very important. Even when you buy things in a grocery shop here, if you have a, I think you, I have a TIN number. But my team number, I don't even, I have never used it, okay, but, um, yeah, you're going to pay for tax for everything you buy. Even when it comes to buying spoon, you're going to pay for tax. So, yeah, I feel like we did justice to everything. Please, please, if there's anything I'm missing, leave it down so that other people can go through the comments and see. So, I think we're done with this video, guys. So, guys, we have come to the end of this video. If you got something out of this video please leave a like on this video subscribe turn on your post notification leave a comment for me in the comment section below i would leave a link to all this app how to download them in the description below so do check the description as well you'll see a lot of links to things i talked about and i'm also going to leave a link to the blogs i kind of because before recording this video i went through like to get information as well so i'm also going to leave a link to those blogs so that you guys can check it out as well so yes thank you so much for sticking around watching to the end you're my fave. No one can even tell you that. And I'll see you on my next one. Bye, guys.